Greetings! Today we're going to look at this RAV Power 10,000 mAh jump starter manufactured by the uh, Shenzhen Nearby Express Technology Development Company Limited. So not quite the lucky golden rabbit electric car limited, but not far off. Now this was given to me by a work colleague because it doesn't work anymore. Can you see why? It's a little bit on the puffy side, don't you think? It's pretty much a lost cause as far as I'm concerned, so let's tear it down the rest of the way and see what's inside. We'll also take a look at this plug-in bit which goes between the battery pack and the car that's being jump-started. Now before we get any further, I know there are other videos out there peering inside this sort of thing. I know Big Clive's done some, I'm going to put some links here to them, but I'm deliberately not going to watch those until after this goes live. I think it'll be interesting to see how the units and the teardowns themselves differ, and also how much I pick up along the way, as I tend to find reverse engineering these sort of boards a bit of a learning experience. Not enough to build one from scratch, but some useful tidbits will hopefully sink in. I can't show you the pack working, as it's, well, dead. What does work, though, is this jump lead assembly. So let's have a play with that, plugged into a bench power supply. As you can see, with power applied, but nothing on the crocodile clips, the LED just flashes red off, green off, repeatedly. Connect the battery the wrong way round, and it flashes red slowly. You see it's got this little button here, and if you press that button when it's flashing red, that button does absolutely nothing. Connect the battery the right way around, and it's flashing green. At this point, if I press the button and hold it, after a few seconds, it closes the relay, and then clicks back out again. That's because the battery is already at 12.7 volts, so it doesn't need a jump start, and you wouldn't want the battery, or especially the car alternator, trying to charge the lithium pack. Tweaking the supply voltage up or down makes no difference. It still just connects, then disconnects. With a more discharged battery, if I connect the leads, then straight away, the light turns green and the relay closes. Every few seconds, it briefly disconnects and reconnects. It seems to do that regardless of the supply voltage, although the disconnect period is longer if the voltage is around 14 volts. And if it's below about 10 volts, it disconnects altogether. With the test lamp connected, it still flashes red and green. But if I press the button, it's happy to turn on. And it'll stay on for up to 30 seconds, as long as the voltage doesn't go too high. If the voltage goes above 12.6 volts, same as we saw with the battery, it trips out. So that's that bit in action. We'll come back to it later, but first, let's get the jump pack itself apart. Well, more apart. Battery voltage is about 50 millivolts, so you can see it's uh, it's pretty safe to, to work on now. We'll do a quick tour around the outside. It's got a set of LED indicators on the front. They're actually surface mounted onto the board there. We have the connector for the jump leads. A USB output, an LED, and a micro USB charge port. Back of the board, we have the button and the four LEDs. And if you look at these LEDs, it looks like they're connected two together on each side, like they're cheated on the um, on the battery gauge, and you'll only have two on or four on. But they haven't. If I put my meter into diode test mode, you will see that if I put my meter across one LED, it turns blue. If I put the probes the other way around, the other LED turns blue. So they're using two wires to drive the two LEDs. Here's the bottom of the board for your viewing pleasure. And here's the top. 
That 14 pin chip near the micro USB port is what controls most of it. No markings whatsoever on the chip, but the way it's connected, plus the fact my IC programmer recognizes it as being manufactured by microchip, indicates it's likely a pick of some sort. Now there are dozens of 14 pin pick models it could be, and a handful it definitely can't be. But I can't tell which model it actually is, and I can't dump the code out of the chip, so I can't narrow that down any further. I can draw the schematic though, hopefully without any missing tracks, and here's what I think is going on. The PIC controls MOSFET Q1, which works with L1 as a boost converter to generate a supply to charge the battery. One of the PIC's A to D converters takes a divided down sample of this supply to monitor the battery voltage, and obviously monitor the regulator output. This battery voltage is also used to determine the charge level, which is displayed using the four blue LEDs connected in inverse parallel across the three wires. Those are the four LEDs we saw earlier on. A fourth pin drives another MOSFET to control the torch LED on the side. An on-off button rounds off the left-hand side of the pick. The right-hand side of the pick is where all the A to D inputs are. As far as I can see, it's monitoring USB input and output voltages and currents, and the battery voltage mentioned earlier. It's also got a control output for turning on a voltage regulator. I couldn't find any details on this particular chip, but the way it's wired suggests it's a drop-in replacement for a DIO6912, right down to the resistors which are used to set the output voltage. That control pin also controls the supply to a CX1901A USB charging protocol controller, so it supports the different charging handshakes used by various devices, Apple, Samsung, whatever, all through the same port. Not sure why its supply is switched by the control pin though, seeing as the regulator creating that supply is also switched by the same control pin. Dunno. Anyway, the other main IC on the board is this SH367103 BMS chip, which I found a Chinese datasheet for. This chip monitors and presumably balances the individual cell voltages and also controls the direction of power flow between the battery negative and the USB negative rail through a dual MOSFET. When charging, the current returns from B- through the diode inside Q3A and MOSFET Q3B. When discharging, it flows the other way. I don't think it can go into standby mode and block altogether, as that would disconnect the ground supply of the PIC and shut it down. Whether that's why there are extra transistors which skew the VM input if the discharge mode is not enabled, I don't know. They don't appear in the example diagrams in the datasheet. And that's it for the jump starter board. Let's take a look at that bit that plugs into it. Here's the board with a 70 amp relay sitting on the top. And here's the schematic. This time they've opted for a Holtec microcontroller to run everything, and they've not milled the model number off this time. That monitors the jumper pack input voltage, the voltage across the battery clamps, and the temperature of the relay. It's also got a clever way to detect a reverse connection to the battery being jump started. If the battery is connected in reverse, the red output clamp will be negative relative to ground. That'll light the optocoupler, which pulls down pin 10 of the chip to alert it that the connection's the wrong way round. There's an unpopulated position for a socket on the board. That appears to be for programming, as it just connects to the chip supply, ground, and the in-circuit programming pins. Some more connections to the bicolor LED and the button, and that's pretty much it. With the end wrapper off, you can see that the cells are actually connected with a circuit board, and your balance cable then connects in between. So I'll cut the wrapper off, revealing three very puffy and date stamped cells. So it is a couple of years old. Well, it's no use as a jump starter anymore. Could I fit it with 18650 cells such as these and use it as a USB power bank? Maybe. Should I? Well, given it's already puffed up one set of cells, perhaps not. I can have a bit of a play with it though, back on a bench power supply. Now the BMS won't be best pleased at the moment because I'm not connected its cell monitoring wires. Let's see if it's happy enough to turn its discharge MOSFET on though, which will provide a ground for the pick and allow it to boot. Yes, it will. After a few seconds it shuts itself off, but if I press the button briefly, it will light up the battery gauge. And if I press and hold the button, it will knock the torch on. First deal is constant. Then it's flashing, then it's an SOS.
and then back off. And it will go back to sleep again, but what will also wake it up is if I plug a device into the USB port. And the voltage has dropped because of the voltage drop of the cables and it's caused the bar graph to drop slightly. And what I've noticed testing off camera is if I lower the voltage, it will start to have an effect on the graph. If we take it all the way down. There we go. But on the way back up, it doesn't detect the rise. I've taken that back up to its original supply voltage now and it's not told any difference. And it won't recheck the voltage until either it gets turned off or I plug something in to charge it. Now it thinks it's almost full. And if I disconnect, it'll actually shut itself off until I either disconnect and reconnect that or press the button to wake it up. And even with the, the battery missing, it will run if I connect the USB input and turn off. It will still provide power to the iPad. Now this is interesting, you know, the way it's actually dropping its voltage. I don't know if that's the input or the output. Let's find out. Right, okay, that's showing it's 5.1 volts coming in. Turn off the big power supply again. And the input is still staying constant now is 5.09, 5.08 volts at nearly 1.2 amps. And this drop here is actually the, the boost converter, briefly dropping the voltage and raising it back up again. But it's still enough for the regulator to be happy. So there you go, that's what's inside a cheapy puffy jump starter. Hope you find it interesting. Thanks for watching.